G'day, how you going? Ian Aplis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my channel where I like to teach you what you can paint in acrylic. I'll get the size of my canvas and the colours running up the screen now. This one's going to be the sun setting over the water with a branch coming through the top section of the canvas here, okay? So get on over here and we'll get right into it. So my horizon line is under halfway. I've just got some areas marked out where I want my sun setting or rising, let's say setting, bit of that reflection in the water there, some surface on our water, beautiful sky. This is all about the sky today and I want to get some kind of branch just coming through the top of the painting, okay, to set the sky back. So I've got some retarder here and I'm just mixing that into my titanium white. This is out of a big bottle. I call it craft white. A lot of people that regular here know what it is, but if you're new here, it's just student paint craft paint, poster paint, comes in a big bottle like this from the art store and it's good for making your primer for an acrylic sky. I'll show you what I mean right now. So I'm just going to do the sky half first. So I just want to get this onto my canvas. This is the Fredericks canvas, a very good quality canvas mind you. Some canvases can be paper type, cheap type, whatever type, but I've discovered using the better quality you get better results. That's up to the individual what you can afford as well. Now I'm going to stroke that left and right just to get that a nice even thin surface of that retarded craft white paint there. Now with your sky, do you want a warm sky or a cool sky? Like a, well we're going to have the sun setting down here so it'll be kind of a setting colour. Now I'm going to try, I've cleaned my brush, I'm going to try something different. I've got yellow ochre there, yellow oxide, yellow ochre, whichever way it's labelled. And I want to use this down on the horizon. And I'm going to come right across the horizon with this. There we go, just like that. And I want to just get that gingerly faded up to where I want it. Go right across there. Okay. Back down here, I'll just put some on the palette there. I didn't grab any. This is permanent linserin. I haven't washed that brush. I'm going to get a little bit of that and put into this just to see what happens. Hopefully it's going to work out. It's pretty much red and yellow, so it should give some kind of vibe of a sky. And we'll get this colour going up there before we get our blue going. So come across here. Oh yeah, that's kind of mauve, I like that. Now I want to crisscross that with the tip of my brush because there's not much paint on the tip of my brush, just to merge those two together. Happy with that very happy with that. I'll get a little bit more because it seems a bit weak here. Oh there we go, look at that. Play with it, take your time, play with your work. You can even leave some bands in it if you want. I'm happy with that. So I've got cerulean blue here and we'll get this from the top and work our way down to that other colour. So up here nice and blue and then just start bringing it down to that reddish other colour we made. Splice it into it so you're getting those colours nice and there we go, nice and mixed together. Now I'm going to stroke that, get rid of any unnecessary lines I don't want and just stroke it again left and right. Like a pure gentleman I hope Ian. Yes, there we go. And we've got it all kind of mixed together. I'm liking that. I got myself a pouncer. I don't know what happened there. Uh, just to the appropriate size I want. I've got some Indian yellow. So I'll see if I'll use that or not. I'm not sure. And I've got some titanium white. So we'll start off with the white just to get our glare in the sky. And I want it to the left, somewhere about there. I mean, it can even be a moon if you want it to be, but I'm going to want it to be a sun. So I'm going to just get that there like so, and then grab some of that Indian yellow now into there. That white's going to prime it up so the yellow won't be so see-throughy. And I want to, there we go, we've got our yellow Getting it to the edge of all that, see how they've got the white there? I'm just bringing it to the edge of that, there we go. It's within that circle, it can dance out a bit, fade away. If anything, like an egg shape laying on its side. 
grab yourself a brush if you want to blend it in, which I do. So I'm going to just blend that into that area of the sky, long ways, this way like that, because that's the way I've stroked everything. Bit out there, pulling it through. Take your time. Sit back and enjoy this journey with me. And I'm going to do the other side. You can see how one side's happened. I'm going to do the same on this side. Just sit that back and then we'll finish it off with the actual white glary colour that we want our sun to be because it is white. There we go. I'm just grabbing a soft brush to grab the white because my pounce is full of yellow paint. That's still all wet and damp. I want to just sit this white paint, get it quite heavy on there, sit it in there so you've got some white to actually blend within that yellow there, like so. And you might even want to, I don't know, you could probably get some just tracing out like that if you want to, just like that. I'm going to put some clouds into here anyway. Now, where's my little blending brush? Before that dries, let's see if I can pull that. Now, I need a smaller brush, something a bit smaller, and because that's pretty much dried now. I've buggered it up. I've waited too long. There we go. Wipe that. Get that dissipating up there. There we go. And I just want to softly sit that white within our sun there any old way. Just so it's got that main white glare about it. And then just keep playing with that until you're happy with the vibe of it all. So that's what I'm doing. Playing with it. Got more white there. Leaving the yellow though. Don't kill all that yellow. And I'm just gently, gingerly giving our white glare into that. And that is something I know you can do with a lot of practice. You can do it. I want to get some white clouds in the sky, just cutting across. So I'm grabbing titanium white from the tube. It's a lot thicker than that stuff there. And I'll start from here. That one there that I buggered up, I shouldn't have done it, but I'll get something there just like that. Make the body of it. Because like I said, this painting's all about the sky. I will keep the top of that and just gingerly Bring that bottom down into the sky there. Gingerly tickle the tops and let the turmoil, let the cloud create itself. If anything, see what I'm doing? I'm going that way. There's a horizon line that way. I'm pushing that that way as well. And it keeps it, I don't know, it just makes it look geometrically more pleasing to the eye when you're looking at your clouds. Because sometimes we've done clouds in our paintings and for some reason... They're just looking crooked. And I feel if you can keep the main pull like that, just in cahoots with the horizon line, it gets rid of that crooked look. Even get some movement up there if you want. Now over here where I'll put that other mess, I'm just going to disguise that. So I'll get something here coming right off the painting. Right off there like that. Same again. Pull it just where I want it. This is acrylic. I only work in acrylic for those people who aren't sure of that. Bring it down to the horizon layer. Tickle the tops. And you've got some kind of cloud there. I just got rid of those marks that I put there. See how easy that was? You can do it. And let's see if we can... I don't know, where's that branch going to go? We'll just get some kind of cloud over here coming overhead now i want to show you something here what i've deliberately done and what i want you to learn how to do when you're making a cloud any type of cloud what i've done i've laid the cloud on there but i've left pockets of nothing there so when you blend it you get this lighter and darker values of your cloud when you're blending so watch what i do i will Give this one a bottom because it's a bit higher up in the sky. Pretty much pull it like that. In the direction of the horizon line as well. Just wherever, there, there and there, that'll do. And lightly 
twist. Now there's gonna be brighter and less brighter values within this cloud, all because of the way that I stamped it on. I just didn't stamp it on willy-nilly. You've controlled what you've done. And you can see how easy I did that half of the cloud. And we'll come over to here now, tickling the tops, letting the brush dance, drag, pull. Dance, drag, and pull kind of thing. And there's, for sure, brighter and duller areas in that cloud. That's what makes it look more yummy. Now I'm gonna grab some of that Indian yellow we got there and with some of the white, just to get a very lemony white value. I want it to be white, but I want it to be lemony white, okay? There we go. And that cloud closest to the sun, if you want to, this one here, let's just see. Normally I add yumminess as the white, but we'll just add some of this just being refracted by the sun's glare there. Now, do a bit, oh, let's, where's my finger? This is very small, so I'm gonna use my finger here. Wipe it. It's always the same principle, blend and wipe. And what I'm trying to do is just get a bit of this yellow light hitting up at that cloud there and to see if it's creating decent enough bullshit within the art piece here. And if it is, Hats off to everybody. There we go. And I can probably, just for the art's sake, a little bit on this chunky side here. Pick up a little bit more. See how easy that was? A little bit of yellow light, just ref Is that the word, refracting? Into that cloud there. Now I'm just giving that a dry so I can mask up and do the bottom water area. So I've got my clean putter on a brush, just grabbing the titanium bottled white, craft white, whatever you want to call it. And I want to prime the bottom half of this painting. I do not want this paint to hit that masking tape because I'm using a white primer and I'm going to put colour over it. If I hit the white, if I hit the white onto the masking tape, you'll get a white line against your horizon and you wouldn't want that, okay? So I'm just bringing it to it, roughly somewhere there like that. And then the actual color can go to the masking tape. So back down here, we've got our sky colors again. I'm gonna grab the yellow ochre. I might even put a little bit of Indian yellow with it just because it's the water side. It can be different in value. Now, like I said, I can come on the tape and bring this the colour along there. That way this colour will be the ridge against the tape, not the actual white. I'm going to get that along there. Now the sky is over our head, but the water isn't coming down like that either. The water's pretty much out like that. So pretty much this colour, you're not going to see that blue reflection in our water. So we're going to get this. And then again, some of that Alindrin that we used before over there when we did the top half. We'll get some of that into this as well, just to get our water vibe there that's in the sky, which is pretty much up here. But in dusk, I've discovered water reflections don't show the true colors what's up top. During the middle of the day, they do. So I'm gonna just bring this, I don't know, along there like so just to about there, and then blend them together some kind of way. Now I'm gonna put that brush down. I do wanna grab me flat brush, and I wanna mix before we get everything dry. I'm grabbing this cerulean blue on a flat brush and some of the permanent linserin. Get a lot more of that, because oh, you can see I've done a bit there off camera just to try it. And I wanna make this color, get a bit of water in there. I wanna make this color but also just a bit, of, a bit of white just to opaculate it. The water needs a lot of shadowing onto it. So we're gonna, what I'm gonna do, see this bullshit stick? You can come along, but this bit here, I'm gonna just paint on like that right against that mask and tape line. And this t stick just gives me a bullshittingly straight line, as you know. There we go, just like that. 
chisel the brush up again as you reload it. From there, I want lots of, get the paint inky enough so it's nice and sharp. I want lots of like this. This brush here I said I've got as well. I want to see if I can waterfire that, which I can. Beautiful. You can even get your toothbrush and fleckle all this on there if you want, but I'm just quickly doing it for the tutorial sake. You're just getting those darker values um, within the water where the, the wind's hitting it. And you've got the yellow color and then this dark shadowy color. I'm gonna waterfy that half there. Now to speed things up, I think I will do it with the toothbrush because it'll be a lot quicker. So watch this, you can either do it that way or the toothbrush way. So I've had to mix up some more paint. I've got my toothbrush loaded and we'll get all this. I've just put some extra tape up the top as well so I don't get these dots on my sky. Now I want a band of it across here. Okay, just like that. Load up the toothbrush some more. You can have a bit of a gap and have another band somewhere here because when we water fight, it'll give it that vibe of, oh yeah, I like that vibe, you know? So let's try that. It's very dotty, very dotty. Let's just, yeah, look at that. I'll put a lot more on there. A lot more, yeah, come on. Get into it, Ian, get a lot more on there. Don't muck around like you're doing nothing. People want to see paint going onto the canvas. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. That'll do. I'll water fire that. What I mean by water firing it is just giving it that watery look. There we go. I'm pressing very softly because if I press too hard, I'll squash all those dots into the water. Let us see you pull that tape off there, Ian. Yeah, no worries. So I think we can pull that off. Yeah, we're ready to pull that off. And look at that. We have no white ridge of paint along there. Now to put the sun glare in the water, I'm grabbing some of the Indian yellow. I'm pulling it out on a flat sheet here because it's very see-throughy. I need some white mixed with it. Just so it makes the yellow stronger. There we go. And we can get some of this dancing on the water surface under the sun area. Get bits and bobs of it just radiating out here. I'm going left and right like that. I want it to sort of see this bit here I've left open. This is where I want the yellow. Load it up. Push them into the canvas as well, just so it looks more pleasing to the eye. Because the main objective in doing any painting is having it pleasing to the eye, obviously, isn't it, eh? I reckon that's true, Ian. You're onto something there, I think. Oh, I'm not onto it, I'm just aware of it. This isn't the actual reflection of the sun, this is the glare on the water, the white that we put in this will be the actual refraction or the whatever you call it under the water there. So I'm gonna do this, I'll turn the camera off just so I can finish it because I don't wanna bore the living buggery out of you. I just wanna get this in its appropriate spot. I just grabbed a bit of the purple, just so this bottom don't look so pale and weak. I'm just putting some darker values around here, just so as I can get some kind of representation of like a water swell and just finishing it off with some of this yellow right behind it as well and just gingerly tracing into it like I said you don't have to do this I just wanted to add it there about over here just little bits refracting in this bit but we've got a yellow glare out here from the sun. Grabbing some of this white. Now I'll grab my bullshit stick just so as I can keep them reasonably level. And I want this, there's the bottom of me painting, so I want this to come to about that point there. Okay. 
and I've got my stick in a position so I can control my brush up and down. I want to just, oh, that's too wet. I want to wash my brush, but I didn't dry it properly. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah, that'll do. Look at that. Now I want to. get this I'll get the main condensed part of it there keeping it open but reasonably condensed in the middle but it can just gingerly fare out like that and you'll see as we come down leave a gap the gaps indicating swells within the water Where's my line? There it is there, my dot. Try not to keep it all uniform. Try and just nature fire. Look at these kind of shapes if you think you're going to want to add them into your art quite often. So when you are, you're familiar with their layout, their DNA, you're familiar with it all. You can see head on how it's looking. that can a little bit of that there and then I just analyze that look at it is it okay I'm looking at it in the monitor there I feel I might want a little bit of splashing light refracting here somewhere how's that you could see just what that does now I've given it a dry everything's dry I want to bring the branch in front now because the sun's there and the branch is in front of it it's going to be in silhouette it's going to be shadowed you're not going to see detail so I've got my burn number here and I'm going to blackulate it until it's the vibe that I want just keep mixing it around I'm using a little detailed round brush here so it's not going to get too clagged up now what I'm going to do I'm just going to quickly rough in where I want the tree that's why I've put everything mainly over here because I know within my mind, even though I'm not in Carolina, this tree is going to come from here and it's going to look like it's going that way, hopefully. I want the main branch just up here somewhere, just like that, coming about here, just like that. And then something of it coming up out of the painting. And then this one is going to come on an angle, but down on an angle but down like that hopefully it's given that illusion that it's going that way instead of looking like a, a flat pressed flower on the back of your painting there now and the other one is going to come down from here just there probably around like that something coming off it there like that okay now I know where I'm going I'll grab my appropriate brush Okay, so I'll try the dagger first. So what I like to do with branches is make them look branchy. So I come along, let it make a node, like a little lump there. Come along again and over here. And some little broken bits that are dead and broken always look good. Now see the top of that line? That's looking good. I want it a bit thicker though, so it's coming off the painting there. Node it up, let it be... There we go. That's that bit done. It looks very woody and tree trunky like. Don't overdo it. Don't do them too neat. And then this one will just simply come up off the painting, right off the painting. Bring it right off there. And muck around with it. Get it right off there. You want it very tree like. Even put a little node there. Watch. See the little node, how, how it helps? Now you can see a branch like this going over any sky in any picture. Find that for referencing. I have seen this layout in a picture before. I thought, well, I like that because it's looking like it's coming from the painting and dancing straight down in. So now I'm going to do me node like I talk about. Little bits of nodes there. See, I'll give that a twist. This is going to come here. I'm constantly loading the brush so it's wet and inky enough so every time I pass, I'm not having to do a million times. It's, it's sharp. It's not broken up. And I can finish them off with my script line. I'm just going to get the main 
ones here, about there. Get this coming down. Don't try not to think about it too much. Just when you know the idea, just do it and it'll happen. Now, I think I'll stop there with this brush because it's getting a bit difficult. I need my liner, my script liner. So now I've simply loaded this up and this one can do lots of nodes too. Look, stop, jiggle a node in, coming along there, twisting it. Work out how your brushes work for you. I've said that in many of videos of mine. Coming along here, I want it nice and sharp there. So with this piece here, just to finish this section off, I want this coming down, 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 and he's coming right up now. And see, so just in that layout, the way I've come down and out, it's giving the viewer the vibe that it's going right within the painting. It's going back away from them. Look at that, how I'm twisting it. I'm coming skinnier, skinnier. Oh, right over that cloud. I'm excited. Look at that. Have fun practicing branches and twigs and sticks and whatnot. Now I'm doing my best not to bore people. I'm just getting a few more slight heavy branches in. Now we can get something twisting off here, coming up. When you start twisting your brush, you'll find that they do become quite, look at that hair like thin. Now I just want to create bits and bobs left and right, get right off it all. Keep your paintbrush loaded up so you don't have to go over them twice like I did just there. And you want branches crossing over as well, not just all coming out the side looking like a flat piece of coral. You want it real busy and real natural if you can help it. So I'm going to get a majority of this done and then I'll turn the camera off and do more because, you know, I don't want people to turn off and go, well, this is boring. Just gradually moving along. Every now and then I'm looking, I want a nice thick one coming off out here because after looking at it, I don't want too many all the same size skinny ones. So I'm just trying to break it up. When the tape's pulled off and the painting's revealed, it should show its true vibe. Now look at this, just come right down. You can have fun just practicing twigs. That's what it's all about. Right across there. Boom, boom, boom. You don't want them wavy like this. To me, that's not natural enough. I like to just, when I talk about, like, see the nodes that I'm creating? You can do a little bit of wiggle. Let's get something off this to cross in front of all that now because I'm making a bit of a mess there. I'll get that right off the painting there. See, another thing that I like to do, you know, let's join that back up, is where I'm coming off, say like here, node it up a bit and then bring a branch off it. Okay, we can keep coming on with this until the cows come home, but I think our cows are here. All right, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to come down the bottom corner there and just autograph it so we can reveal it. And I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my Patreons and my YouTube channel members who support my content every month. It is much appreciated. Thank you very much. And I do try and urge others 
if they enjoy what they see here to help support my content, to keep me producing videos. Okay, let's reveal this and make a frame on it. There we go. That's not too shabby. We've got a beautiful sunset and a nice tree creeping into the picture there. That was easy, and with some practice, I know you can do it. Well, what a lot of fun that was. It looks beautiful. I love it. I hope you do as well. And tell your friends if you like what I'm doing, but if you don't like what I'm doing, you tell everybody. And also look at this other video of mine. Goodbye, good luck, and good on you.